Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. In this video, I'm just going to be talking about named entity recognition models or NER for short. What exactly are NERs? Uh, you can think of them as a, as a pre-trained natural language processing model that already has bucketed text in specific categories. So you don't necessarily even need to create customized regex functions to extract specific text or specific items within your documents or your corpus so we can start with like a really quick example uh, we know that abraham lincoln fdr and george washington they're all presidents or past presidents in the united states uh, but we can also label them as a person so as a bucketed term we would want to ideally uh, if there's any mentions of these individuals we will want to categorize each individual text as a person and so ner already someone already does that for you and you don't necessarily even need to create specialized regex functions or rules-based approaches to actually extract these and label these as such once we already have our notebook up and loaded and if you have it on your end go ahead and uncomment this code right here and run this uh, this is essentially just going to be downloading this basic library and we're going to be downloading the small english language model and that's pretty much all it's going to be doing so let's go ahead once we already have all of our stuff already pre-downloaded and all that we're going to be loading in our language model which is going to be the uh, small english language model and we're going to be using this display c which is really nice for visualizing entities for instance and we can see that very soon some miscellaneous information uh, this is like sort of related to the architecture of the model that we will actually be using so we have tokens to vector we got tag or parser ner which is probably the most important part <laughs> uh, and then we have the lemmatizer and the attribute ruler um, so this just provides some insight as to what type of layers are actually related to this particular architecture it's nice to know so let's move on to the basic demonstration. Uh, we have a text that we'll be using just for, you know, laughs and yucks. Uh, so for instance, high profile figures such as Abe Lincoln, FDR, George Washington can be labeled as a person. I wonder what they would have thought about the United States today. So plugging in this raw text into our NLP pipeline, where our model is our model that was loaded from Spacey, we're gonna be plugging in this raw text and we're gonna get process text. What do you think that'll look like? Well, it looks almost the exact same. However, what's happening in the back end is that there are many, many attributes that are associated with each one of these items that we have here, each one of these tokens, and so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and just do like help on this document text or the output of your NLP pipeline. And there's so many things that have been related to this text. So I already went ahead and just use this as a pointer oh, right here. Yep. So all of these attributes are associated with our process text. And this just in general, you know, helps us point out what type of values are associated with our process text. So if we were to scroll down and see text, you know, just returning it as a string, uh, we can just call this by text. So process text dot text and voila, we have it as a string. And one other value that I'll be using is something called the entity. And that is pretty much the focus of this video. So let's go ahead and print out all the entities within our process text, all the entities, and voila, we have a Lincoln, we got FDR, and we have George Washington, all labeled as a person. We also have some other values, GPE, which I actually don't remember off the top of my head, and dates. But, you know, uh, we don't need to really worry about that because Spacey also offers a different explanation or the explanation as to what each one of those values are in terms of entities. And this is the Displacey that just, you know, visualizes these specific token items uh, into like, you know, a really nice way where everything just sort of like pops out. Very nice for presentations and all. And these are the famous uh, presidents, you know, giving homage homage to them. So just to give you an idea as to where NERs are typically used uh, in the industry, I have used NERs just for a categorization type of a tool of where I have millions upon millions of documents, records, it could be like tweets, it could be a variety of different data sets. And, you know, I just don't have that many hours in the day to look through all these millions and upon millions of documents. So 
Um, a very useful tool, of course, is the NER. There are specialized NERs for different vocabulary, uh, but this can substantially narrow down and boil down the number of texts uh, or text related documents to a much, much smaller and more manageable like you know, data set and it substantially reduces text sparsity. Now, if you're interested in the, the graphics that might be associated, you can always check out this OCR video that I did. It's already linked over here, uh, very nice video. But yeah, it just goes ahead and looks at PDFs, for instance, and it translates any textual information to a text, like a literal string. Very neat stuff. But yeah, nonetheless, let's look at a real quick demonstration as to what this might look like. So imagine that we have, uh, well, in this case, we only, we only have 10 CSV files, but imagine that we have millions upon millions of unlabeled information and unlabeled, you know, data sets. And of course, you know, as a, uh, as a human, I don't want to go and read all these uh, CSV files, you know, one after the other and just tagging labeling this data sets or all these data sets. And so there are ways to help us, you know, reduce all this information. But in this particular demonstration, uh, let's try and narrow down the data set so that we only want to retrieve data sets that are related to people. And so we're gonna be using our trusty small English language model to try and get anything to do with an entity of a person. And we want to return that specific string, the string that's related to the data set, essentially the file name. So let's check out what some of these files are. And I actually just went ahead and copied and pasted uh, a bunch of values into many of these documents um, into a CSV file. So like each one of these paragraphs could be a part of a cell, for instance. So that is what that looks like. And just a quick overview. And so, you know, just utilizing the NER in detail, I'm essentially just going to be looking through and peeking through each of the documents. Let's go ahead and run that. But each, essentially the first elements of each document I will be looking at. And this process text is utilizing the model where our model is accepting the very first element for each one of the documents. So that is what that looks like. And this is just, you know, some associated output that I just generated, printing out the specific entity that was found and all the other uh, associated entities that, you know, just ni nice to look at and it, it's associated data files for each one, uh, one, each one of the outputs. So scrolling down, it seems that we only have, we only have four CSV files that have the person entity. So looking at, let's say the data three CSV three, uh, this lengthy one right here that has dominoes. So Domino is a person, so of course return that. And looking at four, um, seems like there were no entities that were associated with any of that. So this substantially narrows down the focus and the uh, the point of view as to you know you just want to reduce all this text and you know reduce your text sparsity for whatever it is you're trying to do. So what happens if we don't see a NER or like a specific text that should be associated with a person, for example. So this, you can go ahead and try and customize this a little bit, but in this case, we are going to be looking into, let's say that, and let's just run through this real quick. Uh, but let's say that CP3O and R2D2 are people and we want to label them as such. And so as we can see using the display C icon um, or functions, uh, these are not highlighted and these are not people. So let's go ahead and try to fix that. So using a real basic of the already existing model, let's go ahead and run through all of this. Uh, we are going to be pulling out the, um, the hash value for the person ID within this particular model. And that just so happens to be 380. Of course, it'll be a little bit different if you change it to like org, for instance, and print that out, you get 383. And, and if the entity does not actually exist within the actual framework, such as like droid, for instance, we're just going to get a different vector. And then you're going to have to customize your own NER model altogether with training data and all that. But that's for a different video, you know. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and change this back to a person. I get that as 380. And then this is just the labeling process. So entity CP30 process text. So this is going to be the starting position and ending position for essentially each one of the values within our process text. And it all starts at zero. So zero one, two, three. So start is zero, end is three. 
And we're going to be labeling this specific text as a person. Similarly for R2D2, so this started at 3, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 9 to 12. And essentially, you're just looking for those spans in order to just you know label them. And you let the, uh, the pipeline do the rest where it can infer any other specific items that might be similar and it will label them as such. So let's go ahead and run this. This just appends those specific entities that we just labeled over here. And let's look at how well it did. And voila, we have CP3O and R2D2 labeled as a person. But also notice that you know when it's trying to generalize and find similarities between uh, this text and the person text, uh, it also led to perhaps an overfit if you're trying to add entirely new entities, that's where the customization of the training data, testing data, and all that will come into play. So that's cool. So what's next? Uh, you can go ahead and go to Hugging Face, a very nice website where it hosts a lot of, of like you know different NLP models all together. You can go ahead and download those models for whatever it is that you're trying to do. And there are customized vocabulary sets for specific in industries, whether it be like medical or finance or you know you name it. There's all these different industries with different lingo, and each one of those NLP focused models can substantially help you cipher through many of these documents and avoid you a lot of headache and a lot of reading.